Let's let me introduce to you all the operator. Not the operator, like the main guy of the con. So, the con was made by this guy. And it's important to highlight him because this guy had a bit of a problem in the con. He was like sad boy posting, he was melting down on Twitter. He, he even deleted his own Twitter at one point and he threw quite some shade at other event organizers. Like in the past, like in the past, this guy talked about how every other con was like, look at this. In the past, this guy talked about how every other con was apparently like bad and whatever. And not good. Talked about their sharp shortcomings, even mocking on-site selling. So when the con did a massive oopsie, he decided to blank out his uh, to blank out his Twitter account. Like I said, he deleted his Twitter account. He straight up like nuked it, and he wanted to hide away from the criticism. I guess maybe it was too much for him. But then they decide to make really a really really poor solution to the line problem because the 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 core problem of the con was the line. Hold on. Because in day two, it was an absolute disaster. So they posted this. And and no, and no him po and them posting this alongside the, the organizer deleting his tweet was, I think, one of the worst decisions he could ever made. Because that affects the morale of the staff of the con. If their leader falters, some of them are going to waver too. He also decided to extend the convention hours. And while, yeah, that would mean that a few people that didn't decide to go home and give up would be accommodated, it also, it's also at the expense of the staff and the artists and the booth owners and the celebrities. And he was extremely arrogant too. He said, like I said, he said he wasn't going to do what everyone else was doing. He was, he was, he was going to be different. He was super premium event, he promised. But the irony is that even people that paid for a premium in this event like got ripped off like they spent 400 dollars or like roughly 20k for premium passes only to end up wasting their time on the con and look chat nothing feels better for the common man than to see some rich posh guy's ego getting pegged down like the oversold tickets out of greed or out of the need to impress and need to accommodate everyone that wanted to go i don't know perhaps like a mix of both like he had this entire backstory about wanting to change the uh, the Philippine scene. Hold on, he had this entire backstory about wanting to create the best Philippine convention scene. Scene about how his dream was the best or whatever, and his colleagues and his family and he himself hyped it to an extreme degree. And he didn't just fail to deliver; he failed to deliver in the most spectacularly disastrous way he could. The best con that I could. Make uh, I could compare it to is actually Tanacon, not Fire Festival, not Dashcon. It's similar to Tanacon. If you don't know what Tanacon is, there's like entire videos about it. And like, look, I'm all up for a man wanting to dream big and be ambitious, chat. But I don't think you should be condescending and be smug about how you think you can do better. Because the key word there is think. You think you can do better. You can be proud. You can be arrogant about things, sure. But I think you can on you're only allowed to do that after you manage to do an excellent job. Then people would actually have lauded you, would have thought that your arrogance was a bit warranted. Because even if you're an arrogant douche, like even if you're an arrogant and ambitious guy, but you can back up your pride and ambition with skills and results, then yeah, you know what? I respect that. You have the past to be an arrogant douche. It's annoying, sure, but you proved yourself. People can and must suck on your dick for doing a good job. You deserve it. And like as, and as what was mentioned earlier, Conquest was apparently a, a good success last year. But that was because the scale and the execution was manageable. This year, they forced themselves to go from level 2 to level 10 within a year. And I don't think that's manageable. Like, raising the sheer scale of the event like that within just one year of planning, I don't think that's enough. Like, they wanted to do many things. Now, that being said... um. This guy, this Justin guy, this Justin guy, we don't know if he was truly fully responsible for the event being that rough to participate in. Like, the main problem of the event 
was the oversold tickets and the amount of people that got in. Everything else, like the stands, the booths, and the accommodation, the food stalls, and the stages, and the kinds of people that went in, they were really great. Like they even had like transportation fees and discounts, like for Grab and Ancas, for people to go to go to the convention. Like this was a very coordinated attempt from even the government and other uh, other agencies and other companies. It was a really great attempt. Like the marketing was great, everyone was great. Everything was great, but the the line problem was just the thing that started it all. It started the chain reaction, basically. Like the only reason why the food stalls, like people are like, okay, let's get to that later. Like the only reason why the food stalls no longer fo- sold food, why the staff got rude and unbearable, and why the accommodation got really shitty was because of everyone's collective frustration with the line. The con goers were pissed, chat, and the staff was pissed as well. Not at the con goers, but most likely because they weren't fed. But yeah, instruction from management was sudden and chaotic. The staff didn't know what they were supposed to do. And besides, we can place a bit of like responsibility on the Philippine in- Philippine infrastructure, because SMX is a piss poor building for an event like this to be held. Chat. The Philippines isn't ready for global events like this. We're poor, and the government is too busy stealing our money to catch up to every other country else. Yeah. But even if it's even if it's not directly this guy's fault, there should have been a lot of due diligence here. Oops, sorry. There should have been a lot of due diligence, especially with how they promised the crowd and the sheer side of sheer size of their dream. They literally fly in a lot of big name influencers that a lot of people love, and they don't limit the ticket sales. They didn't underestimate the fan demand; they overestimated it. They actually thought that Conrad Hotel, uh. And the Mall of Asia, and Microtel, and whatever malls, whatever segments of MOA could accommodate could accommodate seventy thousand people. You thought that amount of people would be accommodated by three buildings? Wild, bro, wild. And chat, look. They never planned for a headroom in case it went over a capacity. Yeah, yeah, bro. Like the influencers and the people with the connections and whatever that got in without the hassle of getting. In line, have it easy, and it's not like I want to guilt or invalidate the good time that they had or anything. Like, hey, at least some people actually enjoyed the con. But it's important to highlight the elephant in the room that a shit ton of people, no, no, the majority of people had a rough time with this event. Conquest was really only fun for a few content creators and people that had the friends and the connections and the people that had and the industry people that had like, you know. I, uh, special IDs and media IDs or whatever. Basically, people in the higher echelons and authority of the event. But not people like us, not people like normal con goers, and even to some artists. Like, like I said, hell, even the staff, the security people that didn't even they didn't even eat throughout the entire day to maintain the peace. The volunteers were panicking over what they should be doing, and they also weren't eating much because of the chaos. The art and the stand owners that were tired as hell because the organizers suddenly wanted their, to run their booths from nine in the morning till nine in the evening. They're actually they're actually having the artists and the talents be the ones that pay for their own greed and incompetence. The enthusiasm was gone for the most part past six and seven o'clock because everyone was tired. The artists I wanted to visit already either went home and had to get back up, and the people that I wanted to meet. Like content creators that I really wanted to meet, to meet, I couldn't find and reach them anymore because by the time their event ended, we were still waiting in line. So to people like us, it was a nightmare. Chat, as someone that actually spent a shit ton of money to fly over to Manila, like book hotels, buy the buy the actual ticket and paid for a good time, as someone that didn't have the connections to enjoy the privilege and the luxury of those that got in hassle free. Like as someone that stayed in that fucking line for over four and five hours, twice both in two days, by the way, both in day three and day two, and still wasn't able to buy anything or meet anyone because of the awful queuing process, I can tell you that it was that bad. It was just that bad, and I hate, I absolutely hate how some people are actually like downplaying the uh, the severity of this event. Like some people were actually downplaying the magnitude of this disaster, 
saying that it should have been a le- that it should be a learning experience and that they'll do better and that the organizers are brave for admitting their mistakes or something like that. No. No, they're not. Acknowledging and admitting you're wrong when you make a mistake is a moral obligation. If you fuck up, it's only natural that you should apologize if you feel sorry. Like it's not brave. It's not strong of someone to apologize or acknowledge their mistake. When the fuck did that become a thing? Like what? Swallowing your pride, taking accountability and apologizing is some somehow something that deserves praise and should be applauded now? No. That's like that's just step 1. That's the bare minimum anyone can do if they make a mistake, if they fuck up. The praise and the applause comes when and if they become better. Stop coddling people that make mistakes. Let them simmer in that guilt. Let them take the full brunt of the emotional turmoil when they realize that they fucked up. Be, be there for them, but let them have the consequences. Because those consequences are what's going to stick with them and make them a better, better person. Like, Jesus, I don't, know why, how, I don't know when people started to have that mentality, bro. Like, okay, chat, look. I'm sure the organizer is bombarded with all sorts of negative messages and death threats and all kinds of things. Like, people were getting harassed and death threats were apparently being sent. And I don't, I don't approve of that. I don't condone that. Like people, were, like, people were actually fighting the security people and harassing the staff for just doing their job. And I think that sucks. And I do sympathize, you know, getting harassed and getting death threats. But I do think he should reflect fucking deeply and try to make up for this massive yab. It's a good thing. It's good to dream big, but it's not good to have a massive ego. You get complacent. You take on more than you can chew. Can you get a refund? I can't. Some people can get a refund. Like people who were waiting in line. Like, uh, let me show you that again. Like, the only people that get refunds were people that were still queuing in line and people that di- that are a- that didn't claim their tickets. So people that lined up and got into the con but didn't have the full con experience, they can't have their refund. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, I do think that he needs to be better. Like, this guy, he's still young. He can still rectify his mistake. Like, this isn't going to ruin his life. This is going to be something that's going to shape him for the better. At least, hopefully. Because you don't become, like, you don't become a better person without some semblance of adversity. So, like, this disaster, chat, look. This disaster, it's going to live rent-free in his head for quite some time. He's going to lose a lot of sleep. He's not going to be able to enjoy the fruits of his labors for quite some time. He's going to torture himself over and over again for being so condescending and arrogant. He's going to want to shrivel up and die. That guilt is going to eat him up from the inside. And he's not going to be able to do anything about it. And it's going to simmer and cook. And it's going to be very excruciating for him every single hour, every single day. Because he knows that deep down, even despite other factors of the con's failure being outside his control, it all, the failure all boils down to him being severely lacking. Damn, conquest was really that bad. It was. It just was. So let's be, but let's be a, li- a little bit sympathetic here. A lot of people aren't going to understand how he's going to feel like. I do. <laughs> So, you know, let's be a bit sympathetic. Still, I do think that he deserves to have some semblance of punishment. Because I think a mistake of this magnitude is grounds for a fair bit of deserved consequences. And I think the reason, the reason why people can't take that apology or, is, or, or was even really, really infuriated with his apologies is that we don't see him face any repercussions. We don't. Like, okay, I'll be the first one to admit that he might be getting a lot of backlash behind the scenes. Maybe his investors and sponsors or whatever are giving him an earful. Maybe he just lost a lot of his prestige and a lot of friends. Maybe he's even exiled and it turned into a pariah by, by certain communities. Regardless, people want to see a tangible consequence for his fuck-up. Like some people, like chat, some people accidentally break an expensive vase. Some people accidentally say the N-word on stream. Some people break a taboo. And then some people waste 
hundreds and thousands of people's time, energy, and rob them of their money. Like I said, the con tickets, the con tickets aren't even the financial burden that a lot of these normal con goers took up. There's airplane tickets, the expensive food stalls, hotel and stay in costs, the makeup and glomering for the cosplayers, the transportation fees. There's a lot. So in this case, saying I'm sorry over and over again won't be enough to satiate the people's anger. In fact, it's infuriating because you can't refund all of us. Again, the managers and the organizers and whoever is responsible for this fuck-up shouldn't be facing death threats and harassment, but they should be facing consequences. So please, please, no one should undermine the severity of this disaster, especially if you weren't there down in the trenches. Like, the posts you see on social media aren't exaggerated. I know people, I know people and Twitter in general exaggerate a lot of shit to generate anger and fury bait, but the claims that you see in this very specific instance aren't exaggerated at all. It was simply that bad. This is also embarrassing to all the guests that they'll invite. Yeah, it was. In fact, so embarrassing that Pokimane had to step in. Okay, chat, look. Pokimane, God bless her heart. Pokimane felt so bad for the people in the long ass queue. She pulled a good Samaritan. She pulled a good Samaritan and offered food for the people in line to make them feel a bit better. And first of all, this is a massive dub for Pokimane, chat. Like, even if you don't like her for all sorts of reasons, you gotta admit that this was hella respectable. And second of all, like what that other person said, it's a massive W. It's actually embarrassing. Because to me, if I were, a con, if I were the con organizer, I would be embarrassed. Because to me, that just means that the talents and the celebrities in the con just recognized how absolutely incompetent the organizers were and how much of a disaster the event was. But, be but because they have to be happy, like, chat, the, the celebrities and the people, they have to be happy so, they that, so that they don't bring the mood down. Because they have a PR and financial stake in the event itself. Or perhaps because they, they were just that oblivious to the disaster going on around because they're VIPs. Regardless of the reason, they can't say anything. The voice actors in the event isn't going to make a statement saying how, the sh how shit the event was while they were there. The influencers won't be able to shit talk about the chaos of the event while they were on the site. It's not in their best interest or perhaps they were not experiencing it because they were getting the VIP experience. Or maybe they signed a contract saying that they can't shit talk the event. The best they can do is apologize for the inconvenience and the terrible lines and like, say nothing. That's it. Jesus. Like, god damn. Lamau VIP? Yeah, it's apparently VIP. Well, not all of it is VIP because apparently, um, Shoto got some kind of, um, bad experience. Not fully bad experience, but Shoto was supposed to have a little meet and greet in private, but then it turned out to be a public thing and then he, it, 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 it crushed a lot of expectations. Hmm. Tonto also addressed this issue? Mm hmm. Okay, so maybe not all celebrities and all, VIP, all, all influencers got the VIP experience. But imagine some of them did. Uh, at least nobody got a heat stroke. But someone did get injured. This guy. Hey, Depresto Sagi, what's this event all about? It's a, it was supposed to be the biggest anime convention in the Philippines and it absolutely bombed. Okay, yeah. So this guy got injured. Jesus. Hold on, let's, let's go through her thread. I was injured on day 2 of Conquest PHL because of the staff's mismanagement while lining up to get into the venue. The staff was yelling at our line to hurry up and move faster, open our bags already so that the line can keep moving. Yeah, I, act I actually experienced this. This was like in 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock uh, on the afternoon. You guys want to see how the line looked like from above? I'm gonna show you how, you, how the line... It looked like this. It looked like this from above. Chat, the line was so massive it spilled over to the entire streets. It caused a lot of like traffic jams. It blockaded a lot of routes for and the roads. It was an absolute nightmare. It was just, <laughs> it was just that bad. And this is what it looked like from the inside. This is what it looked like from the inside. This is the, this is the first floor, by the way. It was just that bad. So yeah. There was some drama at the con too about how some, how about this guy was like 
taking in, like, stealing art, I guess, and then selling it as theirs, and then making merch about it. Like, Jesus. A booth here is selling bootleg keychains of my design. If you see this, please do not buy. Akala ko ba my screening? I thought there was a screening process. And yeah, you know what? Maybe for future cons, there should be a screening, concept, uh, screening process. If any artist comes in, make sure that the art isn't like pirated off of like Alibaba or whatever. Official art used? AR art is a thing too there? Yeah! Jesus! It was bad. It was that bad. One million people saw this. <laughs> yeah. One million fucking people saw this. Oh, and apparently, okay. There's also one, there's one more other thing. Look at this shit. Look at this shit chat. A lot of VTubers were actually complaining about this. 4.15 p.m. They stopped selling food on the second floor of SMX telling us to buy food outside. Instead, not by the choice of the food stalls, but by the organizers and security. I lined up for four hours, haven't eaten anything, and you're telling me to go back outside? So yeah, apparently, uh, the food stalls on the second floor stopped selling food. Uh, that's wild to me. Why would you do that? <laughs> Why would you fucking do that? Crowd, crowd control by starvation, Lemao, yeah, true. That might have been um that might have been the plan there. What if they wanted to starve people so they would go down and allow more people to like climb up? That might have been the plan, honestly. Like I don't even know why the fuck they would do that. Why would you ask people to stop selling food? At a con that big. To get people out there, yeah, that's exactly. I think that's the uh, that's the only reason I can come up with. Literally starving people out. Jesus, and there's also the fact that in the meet and greet they weren't even doing what people what they were they said they would, because like like naturally in a meet and greet you'd expect it to be the like first come first serve right or whoever paid the highest, but nope, people were being chosen randomly for some reason. Look at this. Uh, meet and greet was a disaster. Meet and greet was supposed to be the first come first serve basis. It was never announced that people are gonna be randomly picked. They made up a line in, up in the MOA atrium, but then a few minutes passed. The scheduled time for claiming of meet and greet stubs, everyone started running because they are gonna pick from the crowd. By the way, the staff mentioned that people got injured yesterday. Because of course, who would have thought? Making people rush towards a crowded area to get picked? Surely it's fucking safe. So why did the same when the first climb <laughs> clearly wasn't great? So yeah. Bro, who was the manager of this event? This guy. This guy. This guy's the manager of this event. And here's his rep response. This was an absolute failure, chat. So, in, so as a response, he said, I'm sorry, when I started... Conquest, I dreamed of creating a space where people could explore their passions without judgments and bridge the, the online and offline world instead. I failed you all. Overpromised, underdelivered. I, I entered this year with an inflated ego coming off the high of last year. I thought I could solve the problems, yada yada yada. Lion, jokes on me, LionCon became my own con. Yeah, it did. It's going to be his legacy for quite a long time. So like, anyway, chat. I don't think I'll be attending... So I don't think I will, I will be attending Conquest 2024. Unless my Oshis and my favorite VTubers attend, it's, not, it's just not gonna be worth it. I want to see if these organizers actually face some repercussions. And learn something before I decide to give them any more of my time and money. And I suggest that a lot of you do, too. Like, especially if you're, if you're a casual Filipino con-goer, if you're, a, if you're uh, an artist, I actually suggest, like, to give them a breather. Because if Conquest 2024 was somehow, somehow, manages to be an overwhelming success, like, you know, the venue is perhaps bigger, the queues are smaller, there's actually a decent refund policy, the staff is actually looked after, and the organizers, organizers decide to stop being fucking greedy and arrogant, then yeah, I might go to, to Conquest 2025. Undeniably, chat, there was a lot of great effort made into making this con happen. It's just that they missed, a, they missed the mark by a massive and disastrous margin when it comes to making it happen. They promised too big and delivered too little. Criminally little. And again, I'm down for giving these guys the redemption arc. Like, people deserve a second chance, but I'm also down for giving them the shit and ego-pegging backlash that they deserve. <laughs>